As a kid, I was always fascinated with history. I read about it, I watched documentaries, but now I want to visit and walk the ground of those historic places that I've spent years studying. Join me on my trek, History Adventures. The Getchy Patrol Frank Brian Getchy was born on December 30th, 1895 in Canton, Ohio. He enlisted in the Marine Corps in May of 1917 and was commissioned a first lieutenant in 1918. He served with the 5th Marines in the Argonne Offensive during World War I. After the war, he served at a number of locations. He was known for his talent to play football, and while playing for the Quantico Marines, he was offered a contract with the New York Giants, which he turned down. In 1942, he was assigned to the 1st Marine Division as their intelligence officer. On August 7, 1942, the Marines landed on Guadalcanal and were met with little resistance. Combat patrols that neared the Matanico River were met with heavy resistance from Japanese troops. One of these patrols believed they saw a white flag flying in a tree near the Matanico village. A Japanese warrant officer had been taken prisoner, and Getchi became involved. The prisoner stated his comrades were starving, sick, and might be willing to surrender to the Marines. A combat patrol had been put together to investigate the flag, but Getchi now wanted the patrol to consist of more staff from the intelligence section. The goal would be to reconnoiter the area, gather information on Japanese troops, and map out the area as they returned to the perimeter at Lunga Point a few days later. Getchi took no heavy weapons, no radios, and no medical personnel. The 25-man patrol was ready to go on the night of August 12, 1942. The 5th Marine Regiment's executive officer, Colonel William Whaling, informed Getchi not to land his patrol on the west side of the mouth of the Matanikau River. It was heavily defended by Japanese troops. His suggestion was to land on the west side of Point Cruz. At roughly 9 p.m. on August 12, 1942, the patrol loaded and headed out for their objective. It was a dark, moonless night. The landing craft began to head towards the shore on the west side of the mouth of the Matanikau River, the very spot Getchi was told to avoid. As the landing craft approached the shore, it became stuck on a sandbar. To dislodge the craft, the engines were revved and quite a commotion was made just offshore. At approximately 10 p.m., Getchi and the patrol were on shore and the landing craft returned to Lunga Point. After a brief meeting with the senior members of the patrol, Getchi, First Sergeant Custer, and Captain Ringer moved to the tree line to look for a spot for the men to bivouac for the night. After entering the tree line just a few yards, a shot rang out from a Japanese gun. Getchi was killed instantly with a bullet to his head. A brief firefight took place as Custer and Ringer returned to the beach. Platoon Sergeant Frank Few with two other Marines crawled to find Getchi's body. He was dead. They removed his watch and insignias so the Japanese wouldn't be able to identify him as an officer and returned back to the beach. The patrol had no radios to call for help. After being on the beach for roughly 30 minutes, Sergeant Arndt was ordered to swim back to the Lunga perimeter to get help. It was over five miles away. During the night, the Japanese pushed their attack on the Marines trapped on the beach. More members of the patrol were killed and wounded. After a few hours, Captain Ringer ordered Corporal Spalding to return to the Lunga perimeter for help by swimming the five miles. At dawn, only four members of the patrol were still fighting. Captain Ringer thought they would have a better chance if they could make it to the jungle. As soon as they stood up to make their dash into the jungle, three of the Marines were killed. The only survivor was Platoon Sergeant Frank Few. Few made it to the edge of the tree line and saw a Japanese soldier firing into dead and wounded Marines. He made the decision to run into the ocean. As he swam away from the beach, he witnessed Japanese troops mutilating the dead and wounded bodies of the Marines with swords and bayonets. Sergeant Art reached American lines at 5 a.m., too late to rescue the men of the patrol. Corporal Spaulding reached the American lines at around 7.30 a.m., and Sergeant Few arrived a few hours later. Although various combat patrols in the area of the Getchy Patrol landings saw the mutilated remains of the Marines, they were unable to recover any of them during their combat patrols. 22 men of the Getchy Patrol are still missing. Over the years, attempts have been made to find and recover the missing Marines. There have been changes to the shoreline and urban development in the area has hampered these attempts. Somewhere along this shoreline, the bodies of 22 Marines await discovery and the honor of being brought home to the United States of America. I hope you liked this episode on History Adventures. Please comment and like the video if you would. Please subscribe to our page, I truly appreciate it. And watch for more videos coming up from the Solomon Islands. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in a couple days.